Hello, YouTubers. This is another session for me and Sam uh, into the journey of building OData Neo. Uh, in the last session, Sam and I started building a broker, and this broker basically would allow us to kind of generate expressions using the C# -sharp script, you know, kind of uh, library that's uh, built in natively in the .NET framework that allows you to pass in just raw C# -sharp in a string format and kind of bring back you know, whatever result you want out of that that expression. And uh, we kind of got stuck last time. We had a little bit of research, a little bit of homework, right? The problem last time was that we wanted to be able to uh, kind of pass a generic type, right? And we were getting this strange error that Sam is going to explain in a second. You know, uh, the error was basically, oh, I want to run this, you know, and then it comes back and says, well, you know, the, you know, the data source does not exist. So it couldn't really identify the type, right? So Sam, how do we solve this problem? Go ahead. So um, it seems uh, from the error message, it seems um, the C -sharp script cannot mm -hmm. understand the type, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can't understand the data source defined in the globals. That's right. So, so let's think it as an individual. Mm -hmm. So the C -sharp script takes the a string as input, yep. right? And uh, we add we add the reference for yep. that script. Let the C -sharp yep. compiler to build it, compile it. Yep. So um, you can see line twenty six to twenty eight. Yes. We add three references. That's correct. But the type of T mm -hmm. is not from any not of these uh -huh. any of these references. That's right. That's right. So we need uh, we have to let the C sharp uh, script know about it. Know about the where it comes the T. So okay. Which we have to add the reference for the the type. Okay, so what do we do? Like, how do we do it? So we can call add reference. Add reference again. Okay. And add the add reference has a lot of overloads. Okay. So we can use in the um, so line twenty six to twenty eight using the string. Yeah. And let the um library to identify which like which assembly should be included that's correct so we can call yeah we can call screw mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. you know go to the other uh, references, yeah, the references are out. okay got yeah. it. Uh -huh. so i think there's a uh uh overload just take the, the assembly. assembly yeah there's this add reference there's, assembly. yeah but this is with reference you, we uh, have a, a reference with a text assembly. Okay, let's take a look. Let's find it. Parameters, metadata, metadata reference. There's add reference with assembly here. 262. And there's one here also that takes in like a param, so as many yeah. type as you want. So that's the one we're going to use, right? That, that yes. Like, like you're going to pass the assembly reference of that generic type to, ah, uh, Sam. That's amazing. Like that's that's really cool. So does that mean like we go and say like type, type of, of T. T and then assembly or something like that? Like this? Oh, assembly. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's put everything back the way it was. So let's I'm gonna take this model in mm -hmm. here completely away. And then I'm gonna take, you know, I'm gonna keep this as T T type. All of these are T-type, and then we're going to go back to our uh, test. Oh, man, that's amazing. That basically means we can actually solve this problem now. So I'm going to put this here, and then I'm going to go here and say this is student from that broker, and we're going to run it. What do you think? Do you think it's going to pass this time? I think, think it should work. should work, right? We're going to put a breakpoint here. See, we don't need a breakpoint because we have the test. So let's go back to our test. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. And then I'm gonna debug it and let's see. Let's see what comes from the other side. This is amazing, Sam. We're learning about this C sharp script thing as we go. You know, mm. that's great. 
Okay, we have a result here, no exceptions. That's a good sign. And now if I hover over. I can't see the. I know. Oh, quick, I know. quick watch. Quick watch. There it is. It's working. So this is arguments, right? In the argument mm -hmm. section, you have give me the name, right? Yeah, so the second argument mm. uh, is a lambda expression. Mm -hmm. the, so the... you can see uh, C sharp compiler yeah. uh, generate a, a neural type for us. Yeah, yeah. Generic type, that's correct. Uh, numerous type, uh, zero, type. hash yeah. one, blah, blah, blah. It's garbage. <laughs> it's just anonymous <laughs> garbage. <laughs> so, so this works, Sam. That basically means that whatever the foundation service is going to be doing, mm -hmm. this will be able to kind of go and process it. This is huge, right? Because that basically means that now we can actually go and say, this pull request is over. This, this broker is actually over so let me go over here here is the generate type expression i'm gonna create under the models in here yeah here's expressions i'm gonna create something called globals just to clean things up and this is a public class and then sam we're gonna go and i think globals can now be or maybe we need to add the uh, assembly for globals as well we'll see in a second uh, you always need a global of t because I mean, the, you have to pass the type right yeah i mean um uh, go back to the broker let's go back to broker uh. so run async yeah so what's the uh, um uh description about the third um parameter globals globals this guy this is run async. oh this guy yeah uh let's see so if you go here you got a definition this yeah. globals guy so object who's just an object yeah yeah what's the description the, the, the comment. description of it is an object instance whose member can be accessed by the script as global variables. So this data source, Sam, that we're passing in is basically a variable that you're passing into the script. So uh, in the script, mm. in the uh, uh, string, mm. so we can access the member. Mm -hmm. Then we can't access the globals itself. Yeah. Like this global, you know what we can do? Here's an idea for you. Here's one for you. We can go here and say, watch this. I queryable, mm -hmm. okay? I queryable of T. Mm -hmm. And then we can go here and say, this is my data source, which equals a new list of T mm -hmm. as queryable. And maybe we can simplify this entire statement. So if I get rid of globals, what happens? Do you think? But the T in the in the stream, the T, um, uh -huh. I do think it can't work because there's no information about the T in the in the stream. I thought that's what we passed in here. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Hmm. Yeah, see, I guess so. That's why we need globals, right? Somehow we need to link. Yeah, but. Uh here uh it's just like um uh, uh mm. a bridge i can say it's a bridge so it just means mm -hmm. just need we uh need uh, need the expression that's right we, we just need don't the... care about anything that's right so here we can uh in the instead the new line uh between 36 to 37 mm -hmm. So we can say, uh, uh, give me a curl of int. It won't work because you're trying to access. Look, yeah, look. we can update the expression later. No, wait, so wait. Can... <laughs> just wait. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do what you're saying just mm -hmm. so we can try it out together. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand if you put int, this will fail because s doesn't have a member called name identified to it. 
l let me show you. Um, let me show you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. You know what um, I mean? If we can pass this T to this script, we won't need that globals guy anymore. Okay. So all time thinking is um. Mm. Oh yes, yeah. so we can't update the lambda expression, but we can update the type. Right. Yeah, you are right. So I didn't sleep well last night. You didn't sleep well, but but you solved the biggest <laughs> problem. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna go here and say this is code just for cleanliness, and I'm gonna test it one more time just to make sure, Sam, that things are working as expected. Because I changed the models and everything. You never know, right? You have to do your due diligence. You know, you have to know whether things are working or not. So let's just give it a quick shot in here. Here we go. Ah, uh, it failed. And why is that? Because it's saying object does not contain definition of name. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't. I uh, I. Uh, that's that's one me public. See, 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 that's the, that's the same thing that, mm -hmm. Hmm. prop, string, name. See, it will throw a validation exception. But I know, I know this right now, Sam. I know that some people are going to come and ask us, you know, hey, uh, what is, I, I want the object to be anonymous, right? And I think we can make the object anonymous and still get an expression out of this. Watch the craziness that I'm going to do right now. Mm -hmm. But let me just confirm this right now. Let me confirm because if we can make it non-generic, non-type specific, that means it's becoming super, super powerful. Okay. So this is its name. This is working. Okay. Now let's try this together. What if I passed here dynamic? There's no student. There's no value, right? Do you think it's going to work? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's see. It's fun, right? We're playing. We're trying things out, right? It's, what's going to happen? Yes. Happy Friday. Ah, happy Friday. There you go. What happened here? It didn't like it. It says the definition for name. What if I said uh, it doesn't like that, Sam? Because I'll tell you what. Because why. we have the S dot name. Yeah, but, but dynamic objects should be okay with that. You know what I mean? Like if I go in here and say, here is a list of dynamics, mm -hmm. right? Uh, some things, right? New list of dynamics. I can actually go here and say some some things. Dot, uh, select. select. Yep, and then thing, thing dot name because it's dynamic. It can be anything. You don't know. Look, that's this is a perfectly proper statement. Mm -hmm. Can 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 no hello no build hello. No, no build errors. This is a proper statement. So now we just need to tell. Let me. No, let me... no, no build error, but it it can run. It's a runtime error. Let's run it. Let's run it. I so, I think it's an exception. Oh no, it won't. What what makes you say that? Here. Assert true. Here. Run. Green here. Green? Yeah. Because because it's dynamic, it can be anything. So um, I want <laughs> so... Uh, assign the return of the select. Let's see what what's inside. Okay. I think it's it's empty, but we can empty. check the yeah. Uh, oh it's it's a list. Can we change it to uh, queryable? Okay, I queryable. Do you think that's the reason? Ah, like this? Ah, now it's not happy. Yes. Ha ha. Maybe we should change our. Maybe we should change our approach to be. No, if we build the something as I list, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, real time material uh, object. Yeah. yeah. Only object. Yeah. Or it. it, it but I call it, uh, it's, it's uh, an idea. It's, a same, it's, same machine, it's deferred like execution. It's deferred yeah, it's, execution. It's, it's, it's a STEM machine, something like yeah. this. 
Yeah. And you will be excused later when you call to list the two areas, something like this. But, but listen, listen, we don't have a list. It's just a fake list. They will never have anything in it. Yes, yeah, so that's the point. Uh, what I, what, what my point is, can we get rid of the globals? Yes, that, that, that's what we can do. We can go here. Watch this. Yeah. If we go here and say list dynamic, just bear with me. Okay, just bear with me. Data source equal new list dynamic. Okay, and now I'm taking I'm taking the globals out completely, and I'm even taking this assembly out. Nothing is coming. What do you think? Do you think this is gonna work or no? Huh. Predictions. Computer compiling in real time. Yeah, so let's say select the what what keep Come that. On. No, no, just watch, watch, watch. I'm running this experimentation. Huh? So I'm gonna do debug here. If this works, Sam, we don't need globals, didn't need any of that garbage. Ah, didn't like it. What did it say? Compilation error anonymous type dynamic does not contain definition for expression. Yeah. Uh, so, so I at least as I said it's a real time date. So there's no expression. So expression defined on the iCurable interface. It's yeah. not defined on. Done. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> Let's see. Cheers. Cheers. Nope, does not like it. <laughs> Let's see why. <laughs> uh, missing compiler required member runtime binder C sharp argument info. What? What is that? It's saying, okay, what's the dynamic type requires? In terms of um, where is dynamic type defined? Run, uh, system dot runtime. Is that what it is? System dot runtime. I don't see any reference to it here. But what this guy is saying, Sam, the error here is that put analysis scripting uh, missing compiler required member Microsoft C sharp runtime binder C sharp argument info dot create. Let's see what this is. Let's go mm. Google it. Being it. We have a solution. We just want to make it a really cool solution, you know? <laughs> because because that's what pros do, right? Mm. <laughs> All right, man. Let's do this. Dynamic variables causes weird failure. Nobody knows. Microsoft analysis scripting compilation error exception. Mm, tagging, did you know that? Collections generic. Options, scripting option default with reference type of list string assembly. Oh, is that what it wants? Is that all that it is? Just a list. Of, okay, let, let's try this. Let's try this. Yes, Sam. Sam, Sam. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? Did you fall asleep? No. Are you eating, are you eating breakfast? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, Keep eyes on the screen. Okay. Okay. Eyes on the screen. Okay. Got it. Sounds good. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say type of. Type of list of dynamic dot assembly. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. We'll find out. Debug. Nope. Does not like that. What's the new error though? Compiler required member. C sharp argument info dot create. 
Huh. Which basically means. So it seems it's another homework for us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep a note for that. Yeah. Uh, hold tight. There is a. We could take a note of that and then improve it and make it dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let me go back here. I, it would be nice if I could define that globals thing internally, though. Like get that data source with a list of iQueryable. That would make me very happy, you know. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah, but it's not a big deal for us. It's not a broker for us to move on. No, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker for sure. Uh, this guy yeah, returns. Have... We can put the global as internal because no one need to know about the global. Yeah, but you know it's messy. If you put your models, you know, and everything in the same file, it becomes a little bit messy. Sam, you know what I mean? I don't want messy things. What do you think? You want messy things? Is that what you want? Huh? Oh. Okay, if that's what you want. I can't stop you, son. <laughs> All right. Let's do glo let's clean this up a little bit, right? So this is globals, and uh, we still need that awesome solution that you came up with, which is a type of type of key not assembly, hmm. right? And then if we run our test here, Mm, we still have a failure, which is now now it's throwing the same fail. Oh, because I still have that code in here. So that's this code is the reason why it was causing this kind of ruckus. You know what I mean? So let me go back here. It was as queryable. As queryable? Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a good call. Okay, and then if I do debug. Yeah, building libraries is really hard. It gets you to think about everything, right? There you go. And then that's our actual expression. So the expression that's coming out is the right expression, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. That's really great. So now, now Sam, this is this is a really quick and simple way of doing things. Now let me just clean things up a little bit. So I need here a private read-only. Uh, script options, the script options. And then I need a constructor. And then I'm going to take all of that. <laughs> I like how it's just thinking for me. That's beautiful. And then I need this last one as well. I'm going to set it up in here. Now it doesn't know about this. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's take that out here. Right, so this dot script options. Right, and it's read only. Read only because it's a private class member, um, and we want to pass the type right to it somehow. It's a build error. It's you marked it. Yeah, up. yeah, I know, I know. So if I do it like this, that might be okay. Might I don't know. And then uh, this thing is really ugly. I hate it. But uh, here we are. And then I want to take this whole statement. Yeah. Um, Tell me. What is it? So we can use in, we can use uh, globals to input uh, uh, input the type of T to the script. Really? How? So define a type in the globals of T uh, class. Okay, let's do that. That would be nice. The public type. Okay. Yeah. And then in the type. Yeah, so this three type equal type of T. Type of T. Nice. So now we can access the type, right? We don't have to do this, right? Um, I don't know if that's gonna work. I I don't think we need still need the references. You still need the reference? 
Yeah. Well, how are you going to pass? Then what's the point of doing that? If we're so I, I, I do think um, C sharp script is like uh, uh, individual house or yep. room. Like, like a container, like a sandbox. container. Yeah. Yep. So we still um, feed the house. What what does the house need? Yes. Um, so um, uh, what I mean is, we can. Uh, I want to get rid of the new list of TRs queryable. Yes. And uh, use that in the in the C sharp script. Ah, ha, ha, I see. So we can accept the type. And but, uh, but 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 you didn't get rid of globals. You still have the same problem, right? Yes. <laughs> So, that, that's my point <laughs> it's it's okay so now we can move on because we can mark the globals as internal yes and uh, um the expression is what we care yeah this guy so this here what this guy returns is is a state it. right yes. and and this is what we care about this return value in here right mm -hmm. and and based on this let's just test it one more time i want to make sure that i really don't like this sam like i don't like this disconnect i don't like this this looks uh garbagey crappy so uh Script options. A typo. I know. Even okay. Visual Studio knows how to like. It's sweet. Uh, collect it. Uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, so now let me kind of I don't know. I just wanna. There's way too many. Um, get script options. We have that, and then in here get. Get globals. Global variables. That's that because this is like multiple statements, high level statements. Your code is a little bit harder to read this way because you have too many things going on on the screen. And then the last one I want is this guy. <laughs> this guy here. And this guy here, extract method, get. There you go. And now, now you have high level statements. You know what I mean, Sam, by that? Like, like every statement in here is basically doing, like is a high level statement. It doesn't need, um, let me just do this real quick. String script, get script async. There's your script, right? And now you only have high level statements, my friend. You know, you, you don't need to know, like, you don't need to see all the time what's happening here. You just need to know that we're getting global variables, script options, get script, and then give me the statements. Mm -hmm. High level, right? That makes the code much cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a broker, Sam. Let's ship that broker, right? So let's just make sure we're matching. We're mixing and matching. This is perfect. Are we using these in the exact order? No, we're not. Let's fix this. So I'm going to take this up there. There you go. I I also I also like to honor the chronological order of how things have been called. You know what I mean? Um. Mm. So it's a broco, and Bro. it's not just it's not a sealed class. Yes. Yeah, Do we allow customer to extend the broker? They can replace it. Like they can take that contract. Yeah, they, they can, can take the interface and start from scratch. Or they can extend this guy as long as they confirm to this contract. Yeah. What What I mean, if they want to uh, build the script option by himself. Yeah. So maybe it's it's better to. Uh, mark all the uh, get uh, global variable as protect virtual, get a script option as a protect virtual. Pr uh, protected virtual on the yeah. this guy here? 
all of these three all of these three in yeah. here yeah so protected virtual yeah like this yeah okay so in this case customer can start from ex expression by broker and uh, override what he he want to override okay and then static. yeah yeah so watch this control uh control alt no hold on uh alt shift yeah so if i select something like this sam watch this mm. if i select something if i select something like this mm. what is this hold on okay i can do control shift can you period shift? can just shift to period okay it will select all the ones that are similar and you can oh. type at the same time mm. See? what do you think that's a good that's a good trick right uh yeah that's good but i can't remember the command line I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> <Shortcut. shift. laughs> too many shortcut oh visual studio is full it's full of craziness dude like the amount of like shortcuts but you know how i remember them i no. keep I keep teaching them, like I keep it's telling practice. people about them, and I keep using them. Right? If you use them, talk about them, you know, hear feedback, and it becomes much easier to to remember. Okay, let's try this again, man. Let's just make sure back that... to the previous. What do you think about the pro protect the virtual? I, I'm okay with it, Sam. I mean, you know, I honestly never, almost never use protected virtual. But if you think that this is something that will allow people to extend this, so what you're basically saying is that someone could come in and say public class expression broker two. Yes. Extend and and the derived from broker. expression broker. Right? Like this. Yeah. Right? Just override. Like this. Uh, uh, maybe yeah. just want to override a step, one step. Of course, brother. Like he don't need to start from scratch. So now they can override this step, and then this will run with the new step, right? Ah, but does it confirm though? Let's see. Like if I go here and say, I think it should because it's inheritance, right? So this is I expression. Hold on, I expression broker. Does it confirm to expression ex expression? So if I go and do this, does it like it? Yeah, I think we're good, man. Yes. I like that. I never used virtual protected in a very, very long time. Very long time. <laughs> no. You're, uh, you're, it, I told you, you're you're the guy. <laughs> no, it's a it's it's a, it's a tricky for customer to extend the default logic. Mm -hmm. So we provided interface. Yes, customer can start from the interface. But, you want to build everything from scratch. Yeah, it's yes. Kind of... If he start, if he starts from the interface, he, customer has to build everything. But if he starts from the default uh, uh, class, default mm -hmm. implementation, mm -hmm. he just want to modify one step. Yeah. So in this case, it's better. For example, he want to change the script. He want to change the script option to add more. To the square option yeah so he can he can change that sounds good <laughs> sounds good all right man so here's the here's the guy this is really nice sam i really appreciate that this is the beauty of pair programming you know you get to learn something i tell you shortcuts and you tell me what's over right <laughs> it's great <laughs> seriously man i'm telling you you know this is good all right here let's run this aha what do we have here Oh, did I do a cleanup? Uh, so hold on. Let me revert this. I did a I did a run code cleanup, and our code still has this crappy. Um, yeah, it's disable implicit usings. So why did it freak out? That's very strange. Okay, let me run this real quick. I think it's on the test side. That's probably why. Okay, does the test also, does the unit test also have the right stuff? Disable, disable. Yeah, why did it freak out? Like when you run code cleanup somehow. Anyway, let me go back here. Let's run this just to make sure things are running.
There you go. There is my expression. And just because I'm like kind of have trust issues, I'm going to go here and do prop GUID. Uh, I have a friend of mine. She says GUID. She doesn't good. say GUID. She says GUID. Good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> so, so name and then s.id. So if I go like that and then I run debug, what does that mean to us? Mm hmm And then eventually, Sam, we can actually enable people to kind of rename the outcome. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like what, rename, what's the... you, you, you know how in OData you went and implemented something that's like a, a, a dollar sign select name? Didn't you like do as first name? In OData today, this works today, right? As first name, you're renaming the variable, the property that's coming back. Bro. <laughs> no. Um, you did this. <laughs> in the computer. In the old data legacy, the, the current old data. We don't, it doesn't have as in the dollar select, but uh, yeah. as can be used in the dollar computer. Oh, in compute, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can uh, transform something into another one and uh, put a alias for the result. So you well, can do color compute equal blah, blah, blah as something. Well, we might be able to allow them to do it now in real time by basically going and saying, mm -hmm. I can go here, watch this, Sam. I can go here and say first name equal. And it will work, right? It will work, yes. So that power is there. We're basically just trying to kind of adhere to a global protocol while leveraging the existing powers that exist in the uh, expression trees in C Sharp. All right, my friend. I'm going to throw this away because we don't really test brokers. But I'm going to go here and commit this. So this is the expression broker. It looks good and clean. Globals, no copyrights. That's bad. Let's do. Let's fix that. We don't need the type anymore, so I'm going to throw that out. And then I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to say everything. I, uh. I um, what? upload the uh, one-line code to your... Uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the branch? Branch. So I think there, there could be a conflict. Conflict? That's yeah, okay. okay. I'm going to do commit. So I'm going to go and say, you know, uh, brokers, finalize generate scripts i'm going to commit and then i'm going to try to kind of sync up so poll hmm. do we have a conflict yeah i do think so <laughs> because yeah. we changed the same same, same file at the okay, same that's... okay do you want me to take your changes in no okay my change is just like add a, a one line code okay so this is this is local Take everything from your side. Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay. And this is the one line type of assembly. Mm. It's the same, same thing. The same thing. So we don't want that guy. Okay, then, brother. This, this is, are you okay with that? So this is yes. that. And then what happened here in this one? This this one, we don't care, actually. Deleted. Oh, I changed it. that because you have the object. I changed yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. But we don't need the file anyway. Like the file, we don't need, you know. So okay. So here, merge, merge with Sam, and then let's do another Beautiful. round, and then let's look at the expression broker one last time, just to make sure we did our due diligence, Sam. So if you we... um, tagged the whole project to donate seven. But yeah. at my side, I haven't installed .NET 7 SDK. We we uh we can we can switch it to .NET standard if you want. .NET 6. .NET 6. Do you want to make it in .NET 6? Um, .NET 6 is a long time support version. That's okay. I can make it .NET 6, man. No, uh, we can do it later. We'll do it later. We'll do mm -hmm. it in its own PR. 
So that means we have a PR, my friend, because that basically means we can go now into an actual pull request. Let's see here, Sam. Uh, Odita Neo. We, we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna design a new logo for Odita Neo. Okay. Logo, okay. a new logo. Okay, expressions. Okay, Sam, look at the PR as well, and please uh, confirm from your side. Like, approve it. Look, look okay. at the PR. See, our commit history shows we're pairing. Yeah, Sam. So I'm the co-author. You're, 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 you're the boss. No, I'm the co-author. You're a co-author, yes. Yeah. Always, always, Sam, <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> so let's see. This is all clean, clean. So to be a member is better for me to choice. To be a boss is not a good choice for me. <laughs> we will hear your thoughts and we'll say, you're wrong. <laughs> yes, hope so. Okay, Sam, it's all it's all good and clean. I'm gonna set this to autocomplete. You know, let's just wait for the build to finish. So, what's the next step, Sam? Let me open up our uh, diagram here. Um, the next step is that we need to build this expression, the expression uh, service, right? And this expression serves what, what you and I are going to be doing on, on Monday. You know what I mean? So, um, where is, uh, so the remaining part, I think, hmm. yeah, as you said, um, so we have the expression. Yeah. I think that that's, that's our goal. But yes. how can we um, map uh, new token? Buy all the together. Yep. That's, so we have that's, the string. Yeah. Do we still have the the token tokenization? Yeah, Take we still the have the token. token. To, token, yeah. Yes, this service here, Sam. Its job is to basically take in that O token mm -hmm. and turn it into raw link query mm -hmm. that we can generate expression from. And this way, we never have to worry about constructing expressions right side, left side, upside, bottom side. We don't have to worry about any of that. This is a completely new approach. Yeah, another part is uh, expression we build. I say, as you you can see, it's uh, a numeral type, mm -hmm. and uh, um, yes, we can retrieve the the type. I mean, the, the input type. The student. Do, do mm -hmm. you do you still remember the student? Yes. We put the student type as a generator type when yes. we call the gener generate expression. Yes. And in the, in the expression. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Actually, we can retrieve the student type from the first argument. Yes. The first argument is I curable of T. That's right. So the T is a student. Yes. You know, the input type is 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 uh, important for the remaining steps. Yeah, all all the yeah. Like serialization or yeah. any other uh, validation, something like this. We have we have uh, to have the type of student that that's right. Understand the expression to that's make right. sure the expression is correct. Uh -huh. So, so it thinks it thinks it's okay. So, a numeral type it just returns something, but expression itself has a first argument. Yes. So we can retrieve the type. So everything's okay. 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 So hmm. yeah, let's do it together. We'll do it together. Next Monday. This Monday. And it seems no homework. No homework this week weekend. I will no the, no homework. They all done homework now. You already did all the homework, right? <laughs> you know, I will. I will. However, just try to enhance and improve. Like for us, enhancement and improvement. But I think I think we should be good, Sam. I think we have a solid solid plan because I have to switch all of this and turn it into this lake house pattern. But uh, for now, like ideally, all of these all of these services. Will be just sending messages to each other like that structure 
is the standard 2.0, but there's the standard 3.0. That's the next version where services are actually truly kind of separate islands from each other, components just talking to each other. You know, in a way, how UI components are designed in a way, but but not quite. Um, let's go back and see our build. Did our build pass? Do we have a do we have a successful build? Yes, Start it's green. It's green. Okay, so now we can merge it, right? Generate expressions, merge. This is a this is one step closer. So Sam, this is how I manage and run projects everywhere. You know, dashboards are great, right? Dashboards are great, but what I care about more than dashboard is the ability to basically go look at a project at a high level perspective, right? And basically look at that project and say, oh yeah, actually this is how you know this project is is operating right this is how i run this is the git file project this is how i run all my projects like i look at the project and be like where are we what's green what's 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 uh what's still in progress look like orange meaning in progress green meaning done uh no color meaning didn't start and there's also red meaning blocked right this is how i manage any of these projects that's fun right because you get to see everything right it's much better than Agile dashboards and all that kind of stuff. All right, my dear friend, as usual, it's really fun hanging out with you. You know, we have a successful progress, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'll see you Monday, okay? And of course, as usual, for the people watching us, you know, if you like what you see, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments for Mr. Sam Sue here, you know, feel free to drop a comment in the comment comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you very soon you know in the next session take care have a good day thank you sam bye